All right. Good morning, everybody. Hey, it's so good to see all of you. If you're brand new, it's been a while. My name is Davey Nelson. I'm part of the team here at the Clinton Township campus. It is so good to welcome you this Sunday morning. Hey, I want to invite you, if you would please, would you stand up with us? We're going to start the morning off with some worship. And the reason we do that is because worship is our way to one and encounter God, but it's two to, to respond to him for who he is and what he's done. And this morning, we want to respond to him in a spirit of joy and in gratitude. And so as we sing these songs, we want to be responding to all the things that he's done and is still doing with joy in our hearts and gratitude in the words that we're singing. So let's sing this out together. Joy. 
sing, I thank God. I thank Him for all that He is and all that He's done. We sing, wandering into the night. Wandering into the night. Wanting a place to hide this weary soul. This bag of bones. And I try with all my mind. But I just can't win the fight. I'm slowly drifting. The bag of bones. Just what? Just when I ran out of road, I met a man I didn't know. And he told me that I was not in love. Pick me up, turn me around, place my feet on solid ground. I thank the Master, I thank the Savior. So good to see you all and to see the people who are viewing online. I'm so glad that you're here with us. Uh, we've got some things to share with you right before Brian comes out to speak. My name's Tracy. I'm on staff here at Clinton Township, and we always like to top up, start the day out again with just telling you about some things that are coming up. So something really special is happening on November 10th. 
It's our baptism services. And you might be thinking if you were like me, I was baptized as an infant and I thought, well, I don't need to get baptized again. But that's not really what baptism is about. Baptism is a personal statement about what you believe, a public personal statement. And it's really, you could express it as something's going on on the inside, you're growing in your faith, you're learning about Jesus, and you can't wait to tell people about it. So if you were to go online and go look up baptism, you would see a really neat little video that explains it so much better than I did. But I can tell you when I watched that video, I knew this is something that Jesus calls us all to do. And maybe you know someone, maybe you're already baptized and you know someone. Have them check that out and, and really explore and pray about whether or not baptism is for you. There's more information online. Again, it's November 10th. Something really special is coming up next week is Halloween. But so to prepare for that, this Friday, we have our Trunk or Treat event. Have you guys heard of it? Trunk or Treat? We've been talking about it. Some of you brought candy. Some of you guys have already signed up for filling a trunk. And let me tell you, if you're, if you're pondering about it and you're thinking, oh, I don't have time to come up with a trunk decoration. Trust me, bring a pumpkin, throw some candy in it. They'll be so happy you did. And we're trying to make our goal of 50 trunks and we're just a little bit shy of it. So we would love it if we could have 50 trunks out front. The inside will be full of fall harvest type things and games and things like that. And you might be wondering, well, what does this have to do with church? Trunk or treat, right? We are expecting 1,000 people, that's what's come before in the past, to come through our doors, to see our place, to meet people here and find out this is what church can be like. And when they need a church, they just might come back. So we would love to just put on the most awesome event with tons of trunks out front, all kinds of candy. If you can't do a trunk, we would love for you to bring candy, like so much candy that if you went shopping and you were filling up your cart and they're like, this person's got a problem. <laughs> we would love for you to bring candy because it's really hard to anticipate how much we'll need. We wanna make sure we have enough to pass out for everybody. So that's next Friday, trunk or treat. You could bring the candy anytime. You could leave right now, go buy some and bring it back. We'll leave the door open for you, okay? The week after that is our wild retreat, which is our middle school and fifth grade and, and high schoolers. And they go up to Spring Hill, which is where many of our men are at right now for their last session of man camp. And Spring Hill is full of so many great things. There's zip lining, there's rock climbing, there's all kinds of outdoor activities. But then in the middle of all that fun that we draw them there with is a really great program and a message to help our kids find a place to explore, make friends and learn about Jesus. Information is online. And we want you to know that if the cost is prohibitive, please come and talk to someone at the Hub. We have people who donate scholarships for kids to come because we don't want anybody to not be able to come because they can't afford it. So that's coming up in a couple of weeks, October 25th. And then today, if what I just talked about, you've never heard of any of that before. What's trunk or treat? What's man camp? What's baptism? You might be new. Maybe you're not just yet connected yet, and we have our CT Connect right after the service today. If you were to go over by the reception desk, there's the chat room. We'd love to meet you. We think maybe you'd want to meet some of us. Ask us some questions about Kensington. It's a lot of fun. Real quick 30-minute meeting. We'd love for you to stop by. In the meantime, Brian will be out to talk about prayer in our Faith in Real Life series. Stand up and say hello to somebody. What's the point of prayer? Have you ever felt as if you were praying to an empty room or to deaf ears? Have you given up on prayer? Or maybe even given up on God because he didn't give you what you asked for? In James chapter 5, verse 16, it says, Therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. James emphasizes that prayer is powerful because when we come together, great things can happen. This is Faith in Real Life. Good morning, everybody. All right. Everybody doing okay? 
on this fall Sunday. It's beautiful fall Sunday. You got, you got to take in fall here in Michigan, I learned, because it's like three days long, right? You got to go get your cider donuts. You got to look at the leaves real fast because they're, you're going to be raking them soon, all right? So uh, I love it. That, that's a little pretentiousness coming from a New Englander who thinks they have the best falls in the world, just so you know. But I love it. I hope you're having a good fall. Um, what we're going to do, my name's Brian. For those of you who don't know, I'm the senior pastor here at Kensington and just so happy that, that Adam, the lead pastor here at this campus, would let me come and speak. He's actually speaking at our Traverse City campus uh, this weekend, which is a lot of fun. So if you want to catch his message um, and compare them and contrast them and all that kind of stuff, put a chart together and that kind of thing, you can do that and then show him uh, next week. But uh, it's so good to be here. The first thing I wanted to do was um, just kind of set up and receive this morning's offering. And so our ushers will prepare for that. If you're here for the first time, please just be our guest. Um, don't feel any obligation to give in this moment. Um, for those of you who do give and partner with us in our mission to see everyone transformed and mobilized by Jesus, thank you so much. I know for Beck and I, we love being a part of what Kensington Church is doing locally and around the world. And this is just our opportunity to worship the Lord through our giving. It's, it's us saying to the Lord, we trust you with everything. And, uh, and we also want to be a part of what you're doing. So let me pray for that, and then the ushers will come, and then we'll jump into our message for the day. Lord, we're so thankful for this moment to be able to give back to you. We're so just blessed by how you give us the air to breathe, how you equip us to work, how you meet with us, how you give us grace, you forgive us. And this is just an opportunity for us, Lord, to say we love you and we trust you with, with everything. And uh, so we give of our first fruits. And so, Lord, we're, we're thankful for this moment. We pray that you'd be honored by it. And we pray, Lord, that, this, um, that we'd steward this well in order to bring heaven to earth. And so we pray for all this in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. How many of you feel like, you know, it's fall, lots of things have kicked off, and life is a little bit busy? Is anybody feeling like life's a little bit busy? Yeah, it feels a little busy to me. I got to be honest with you. The Maori household this weekend is busy, busy. Becca spoke at a security event the other day, which is awesome. I don't know. Maybe she's going on some kind of security uh, circuit that I don't know about, but she was speaking at that. And then uh, she's speaking at Orion campus this morning. I was at the, the men's retreat last night and somewhere in there yesterday, we had two daughters who went to homecoming dances, right? And so I spent much of my day yesterday on my porch, cleaning my guns, you know, and slingshots and anything, right? Just trying to throw in a little intimidation factor. Uh, but it feels a little bit busy, a little bit busy. So this is good for us to gather together. And so thank you for joining us today. It's important that we take time and we pause and we reflect on what the Lord is doing and wanting to do in our life. And so right now we're in this series called For uh, Faith in Real Life, IRL. I didn't know what IRL meant until... Um, until one of the team told me that this is what we're calling the series, but it's faith in real life. What we're trying to say in this series is this, is that our faith shouldn't be a Sunday thing, a Sunday only thing. Our faith shouldn't just be lip service. It shouldn't just be what we talk about. Our faith should be practiced every day of our life. It, it should infuse every part of who we are. Our personal relationship with Jesus should be at the forefront of, of everything that we do because Jesus changes everything. And so we want to live lives where our faith is in real life. It's being played out before everybody else. Uh, we want to be real about who our God is. And, um, and so we don't, we don't want these, these fake faiths. We want faith for real. I remember my uh, brother-in-law, Becca's oldest brother, who's since passed, he would use that phrase often. He'd say, for real. And I loved when he'd say it because what he was saying was he was like, he'd say something and then he'd put an exclamation point on it by saying, for real. Let me give you a couple examples. So he'd say, man, those wings were good for real, right? <laughs> So now you're feeling it, right? So he, he doesn't want you to think, oh, those wings were good. He wants you to know what he just said was, was good and true, right? And so you might say, man, the Clinton Township campus is, is, is hopping for real, right? It's like for real. Like, oh, man, like now I really got to get there. So here's what I want to do. 
this is going to be kind of like litter. Well, I shouldn't say that. I was going to say liturgy. It's not really liturgy. It's a call and response. Okay. Here's what I want you to do is, is I'm going to say something. And if you believe it, I love for you to respond by saying for real, but I need to test it out in the room to make sure it's going to work. Okay. So I'm just going to count to three. And if you could say for real back to me and like, and, and like you mean it too. Okay. Like, like, you know, like we love the lions kind of thing. Like you do it, you know, at Ford field here at Kensington church. Okay. All right, here we go. Your, your words are simple for real. Okay. You don't have to worry about it. Here we go. One, two, three. For real. Yes, this is good. All right, we're going to start real easy, okay? Here we go. Chick-fil-A makes a good sandwich. For real. For real. There it is. Actually, we have some plans. Um, uh, you know, I haven't passed these through the elders or anything yet, but we got some plans here that, um, I don't know, maybe we could pass the buckets again. I don't know. I think it would draw a lot of people to the church, don't you? For real. For real, people would come to church. I don't know. Okay, let's, 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 how about this one? Barry Sanders, and I saw a jersey in here already. Barry Sanders could run the football. For real. For real, yes. How about this one? Our worship director, Davey Nelson, that dude can sing. For real, yes. How about this one? Our, our, yeah, there he is. <laughs> our lead pastor here, Adam Karshner, could totally beat me in an arm wrestling contest. All right, just stop it. Give me a break. It's true. His biceps are huge. He should get bigger shirts. Anyway, um, <laughs> for real, for real. Oh, man, this is going to hurt me, like, through the rest of my message, right? Just, like, the new amen is for real, okay? For real. All right. Okay, I don't know if this one's going to work. I feel like I'm, I'm on dangerous territory with this next one. So we'll see how long my stay at Kensington is. But here we go, all right? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, maybe I should just move on. No, I'm going to go. Up. I'm going to go for it. The University of Michigan. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> okay. I think this one's for everybody, just so you know. But I come from Connecticut, so I don't know. Let's try this one out. Are you still with me? Yeah. Have I told you lately that I love you? Okay, ready? Here we go. The University of Michigan needs to get their QB situation sorted out fast. For real. Okay, good. I felt that one good. Now, here's a, here's a real honest one for you. Um, we often say to people who come for the first time, that's a big deal. And, and we actually do this for you. We, we want you to come and belong and participate and be a part of our family. And so if you're a guest today, we're so glad that you are here. For real. Amen. That's awesome. For real. Listen, we want to live a faith that's for real, for real. Like we're actually living out our faith. And as we've been going through this series, we've been in the book of James, written by the brother of Jesus. His name is James. And he's writing to mainly a Jewish audience who had given their life to Jesus and now they're followers of Jesus. And so James is writing to them to say, hey, listen, this is practically what it looks like to live out your faith in Jesus Christ. And so I love this book because it's extremely practical. And, um, and what we're going to talk about today is this, is that faith in real life prays. A, a person who follows Jesus, who has a personal relationship with Jesus, is a person who prays. I mean, if you have a friend and you never talk to them, is that really your friend? No, we believe that we have a personal relationship with, with Jesus, and therefore we speak to Jesus, and this is what prayer is. And so today we're going to talk about how faith in real life prays. When you came in, you received a card like this. If you did not receive a card like this, I'd love for you to just put your hand up, and our ushers will come and give you one, and, and also a pen. And here's what I'd love for you to do, even while I'm speaking, is to ask yourself, what do I need prayer for? If, if, if you could just look Jesus in the eyes right now and make a request, what would you say? Jesus, this is, this is my need right now. This is what I'm praying for. Okay, we're going to have some ushers come around and, 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 and get some cards out to the people who didn't get them. And as I'm, I'm speaking throughout this message, I'd love for you to write that down on this card. Put your name on it, just your first name. Don't have to put your last name. And then write out 
your prayer requests. And just in full disclosure, here's where, where we're going with those. At the end of my message, I'm going to have a stand up and we're going to pass these cards around. Okay. And you're going to end up with one card. And my challenge to you is going to be this, because I think we should be a body of believers that prays for one another. As I'm going to ask you, which whatever card you, you have in your hand to pray for that daily for the next seven days. Okay. And so that's where we're headed. But let's talk about prayer. Prayer is how we speak to God. Prayer is how we, we hear from God. Prayer is, is, is where we connect with the Lord. It, it's, it's critically important for us in faith is to be people who pray. In fact, prayer is the way that God has created for us to connect with him. I can remember years ago when my girls were young, I have four girls, when they were young, I took them mini golfing. And th there was this one kind of hole that had an octopus on it. Not a real one, but you know what I'm talking about at, at a mini golf. And it had eight different legs and, and you could choose any of them to put the ball in. Only one would deliver the ball into the hole. All the other ones would throw the ball in different locations. And so I did the good thing that a good father would do and I, I figured out which arm they should hit it in so the ball would go in the hole. And so I stood there and I said, girls, hit it here and it will go in. And they kept hitting the ball all over the place. It was unbelievable what was happening. And I kept getting more frustrated. I was like, girls, hit it here and it's gonna go in. And they kept hitting the ball. They were coming nowhere near the arm that I was, I was like, right here. Come to find out they were just messing with me the whole time, just hitting the ball wherever, just to get me upset. And so then I turned to them and I said, well, just guess what? I'm counting every stroke, every stroke that you hit there. So they had like a thousand or something like that. Hit it here and it will go in. I feel like what the Lord is doing with us when it comes to prayer is he's saying this, if you hit it here, it's going to go in. If you want to connect with me, if you want to speak to me, if you want to hear from me, it happens through prayer. Hit it here and it will go in. And I think maybe that's what the Lord wants to say to us today too. Come to me, pray. So here's what we're talking about when we're talking about prayer. We're talking about having a conversation with the Lord. We're talking about talking with God, much like we would talk to somebody else. Prayer's not this obligation. Prayer's not a ritual. Prayer's not a checkbox item. Prayer is connection with the Lord. Prayer happens whenever you turn your heart and your affection to the Lord. That's prayer. Prayer can be audible or it can be silent. It can be private or it can be public. It can be formal or it can be informal. Many of you maybe were grown up in a, in a tradition where there was liturgy and it, it's meaningful and it's rich. And in that formal act of prayer, you met the Lord in that. Other times it's informal. You just come to the Lord with your whole heart and you just kind of lay it out. And, it, and it's a bit messy, but the Lord hears and responds to it all. You can pray from your knees or while you're running. You can pray in your home or at your workplace. And, and maybe some people don't understand. You can pray in school too. Wherever you can turn your heart to the Lord, that's where you can pray. In the Bible, in Psalm 73, it describes prayer as drawing near to the Lord. I want to read our passage out of James uh, 5. And I'm a little bit embarrassed today because uh, the pastor forgot his Bible at home. And so <laughs> I have it on my phone right now. I'm not trying to be one of those trendy pastors, you know, using my phone on the stage, but, but here's, here it is. James chapter 5, and I want to read verses 13 through uh, 7, 18. This is what James says. Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being, even as we are. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Again, he prayed, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth, earth produced its crops. 
I want to suggest that in this passage, three critical questions are answered about prayer. And those three critical questions are this. When should we pray? Why should we pray? And who is prayer for? Let's walk through those. Three questions answered. When should we pray? Let me just share three bold truths with you to set this up. This, to give the answer to this question, when should we pray? And the first bold truth is this, is that time spent in prayer is never wasted. And so when we're asking this question, when should we pray? We should know that any time spent in prayer is not wasted. Now, I would say that some of you, maybe you've gone and you've prayed and you're like, man, I, that, that was tough. I, I, didn't, I didn't necessarily hear anything from the Lord. It seemed like time was like standing still and it was tough work. But even in that, the Lord was doing something in you. He was forming you. He was, call, he was calling you to persevere. He's transforming you. There's, there's not a single minute in prayer that's wasted. The second bold truth I would say is this, is that there isn't a place on this earth where you can't pray. You can always pray. It doesn't have to be audible. People don't even have to know you're doing it. You can just turn your heart to the Lord and, and ask the Lord to, to speak to you, to guide you, to give you wisdom before you take a test, before that interview, on your way to work as you're driving. Eyes open, please, in this type of prayer. You can pray. You can pray. That there's no place on this earth where you cannot pray. And the third bold truth is this, is that every season of life benefits from prayer. Sometimes I think we treat prayer seasonally. We say, you know what? Yeah, I, I pray when, when things are, are going rough or when I need something from the Lord. But actually, there's not a season of life that doesn't benefit from prayer. James says it this way in verses 13 through 14. He says, are any of you suffering hardships? You should pray. Are any of you happy? You should sing praises. That's another way of saying pray. <laughs> sing praises. Thank the Lord. Are any of you sick? You should call for the elders of the church to come and pray over you, anointing you with oil in the name of the Lord. And so here, James covers almost every season. He says, listen, if you're suffering hardships, then you should pray. Some of you in the room right now are facing hardships. I want to encourage you to pray. Spend time with the Lord. Turn your heart to him. Gather others around you to pray for you. Pray, pray, pray if it's a season of hardship. I love how G James says, listen, if you're happy, pray. I love that. If you have something to thank the Lord for, thank him. Speak up. Say something. Be generous with your gratitude to the Lord. And then James says, if you're sick, call for the elders for prayer. And maybe today you find yourself in a situation where you are sick. You need healing. I want to encourage you to call on people to pray for you. Pray, pray. And so James, he covers every season here, every season of life. And he's saying, listen, it's always a good idea and it's always a good time to pray. And friends, I love this, is that when it, when it comes to connecting with God, heart to heart, prayer always works. You don't have to wait until God's in a good mood. Maybe some of you grew up in a house like that. You're like, you know what? We're going to wait till mom and dad is in a good mood. Then we'll go talk to them. Right? And now you've applied that to your faith. And you think, ah, you know what? I'm, no, I'm not going to go to the Lord right now. He won't, he won't appreciate this. <laughs> This will be hard for him to hear. <laughs> a little secret. He already knows. And you don't have to wait for God to get into a good mood. I'm going to tell you, he's going to be so pleased every time you turn to him. So thankful that you've turned your heart to him. And you're going to be greeted with grace and forgiveness and love. That's what you're going to meet. And you also don't have to worry if, if God's too distracted to hear from you. And maybe you grew up in that kind of household. Man, you know, I, I keep trying to say something, but, you know, mom and dad or dad or mom, they're just, they're just too distracted. They got too much going on, and so I don't want to bother them with, with, with my thing. And you might think that way of, of the Lord, too. You know, listen, God's got a big job. Can we just agree God's got a big job, doesn't he? 
It's probably a more important job than any of us have, right? And, and listen, there are a lot of bigger things that are happening in other people's lives than my life right now. I don't want to bother the Lord with my requests. Do you think you're going to sink God with your requests? Almost how dare you think that? This is God Almighty who, who created you and created everything you see. He can handle your request. In fact, he wants to hear it. And he's not do, too distracted by everything else. He actually always, whenever you speak up, he hears you. Whenever you turn in prayer and, and you, you, you speak to the Lord, he hears you. It's a 100% guarantee. We need more guarantees in life, don't we? There's not a lot of things that are guaranteed, are there? Most things aren't guaranteed. I remember several years back, Beck and I had to go get a new dishwasher. And uh, we go in there and the guy's selling us this dishwasher. He's telling us it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. You know, man, this dishwasher, it's going to clean it. You could throw anything. You could throw your boots in this thing. It's going to clean your boots. You know, it'll actually even make you dinner, this dishwasher. I mean, it's unbelievable. It's incredible, right? He's just selling us. He's putting the hard sell on us, right? And we're like, okay, fine. You know, we'll, we'll take this one. He's like, great. And then you come over here and you sit at the little table and you fill out all the paperwork. It's more paperwork to buy a dishwasher than to take your kid out of the hospital hospital when they're born. It's unbelievable, right? You're signing all the different things and you do it, right? And then he says this, he goes, hey, do you want to add the one-year warranty? I was like, this thing's brand new. And Becca got mad. You want, Becca got mad. Don't tell her I said it, but she got mad. <laughs> it was awesome. She's like, you telling me that this dishwasher that you just sold me brand new is going to die in one year? And the guy looked back and he says, well, Nothing's guaranteed, right? And isn't that a little bit the way life is? Doesn't it seem that way? Nothing's guaranteed. Well, here's the thing, friends, and the great news about a relationship with the Lord is that when he promises it, promises it it's guaranteed. 100%. All the time. And so we know from his word, from his character, that when we speak to him, he hears it every time. It's 100% guarantee. When you make an appointment with the Lord... It's a guarantee. He hears from you. He meets with you. And therefore, it's always a good time to pray. The second question I have is this. Why should we pray? Why should we pray? And I want to submit to you that we pray because prayer is powerful. Has anybody experienced the power of prayer in their life? Yeah, it's powerful. It says this in verse 16, James 5. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. Man, I, I want to be a person that has powerful prayer. <laughs> I want to be a person who experiences the power of prayer, don't you? Well, well, notice here in this passage, it says something first before the powerful prayer, before the wonderful results. It says the earnest prayer. So it means keep praying. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power. Oh, man. Doesn't it kind of feel like, oh, now I got to count myself out. Like, I, I don't know. I'm not righteous. You know, anybody who's like, I'm righteous, you're not righteous. <laughs> okay. Like, oh, what does that mean to be a right? Oh, man, does, do any of us qualify to have powerful prayers? If that's what an earnest prayer of a righteous person. Well, what's it mean to be a righteous person? I hope this is going to be good news for you. Listen closely. Uh, righteousness means having a right relationship with God and a right relationship with others. Now, the problem is, is that we're all imperfect people, right? Have a perfect person, raise your hand. Right, none of you, right? We're, we're imperfect people. But here's the good news of the gospel, is that we know who the perfect person is, and his name is Jesus. Now, here's the thing. We are Easter people. We believe that Jesus died on the cross, and he rose from the dead. He is alive. This is what makes the Christian faith different than any other faith on this planet, is that we worship a God who is living and active in our life. We also believe that Jesus ascended into heaven, and then he gave the gift of his Holy Spirit. And it's his Holy Spirit. It's not a spooky thing. It's the Spirit of Christ Jesus that now indwells the believer. Therefore, everywhere we go, the presence of God goes with us. And so now here's the good news 
Because if a powerful prayer is said by a righteous person, who is the righteous person? Jesus. And now what we're saying is Jesus lives within us. And here's the great news is that when our Heavenly Father looks at us, guess what he sees? The righteousness of his Son, Jesus Christ. Not because of you but because of Jesus who lives within you. 2 Corinthians 5, 21, if, if you don't believe me, Paul says this, for God made Christ, who never sinned, the perfect person, to be the offering for our sin so that we could be made right with God through Christ. And therefore, our relationship with God is right because of Jesus. And when the Lord looks upon us, he sees the righteousness of his son. I've got a good friend, his name is Gita. And Gita is Romanian, and he lives in Romania. And uh, he, he's a missionary there. He, he does great work in Romania and also on the Ukraine border in, in Ukraine now. And he also does prison fellowship and prison ministry. He was an ex-prisoner himself. And Gita was also the Greco-Roman wrestling champion of Romania. Heavyweight champion. This guy is huge. And I went to Romania on one of my trips, and we went into a Romanian prison. I didn't want to do this, but I did it. And I went with Gita, and we went in there, and we were going to do some, some preaching and some speaking and, and spend some time. Well, we were out in what they call the yard, okay? And it was a sketchy situation. And for a little while, I lost sight of Gita. And it's hard to lose sight of Gita, okay? Biggest man I've ever seen. And all of a sudden, these few guys come over to me and they say, hey, you're going to help us. Who are you with? And I was like, oh, my gosh, like, I don't I can't. I'm not helping these guys. I'm fearing my life at this point. And all of a sudden, Gita walks through the door and I say, I'm with him. And they turn their heads and they see this mammoth of a man. And they left me as fast as they could. Was it because of me? No, it's because of Gita. I'm with him. Now, here's the thing. When it comes to our prayer life, our prayers aren't powerful because of me. No, it's because I'm with him. I'm with Jesus. He's within me, and therefore I can go before the throne room of God, and I can pray powerful prayers with, a, with authority because of Jesus Christ who is with me and indwells within me. Prayer is powerful, friends. It's powerful. It's powerful. It's powerful for, for these reasons. Prayer is powerful because prayer is the way we speak to God. It's, it's how we communicate to him. But prayer is also, also powerful because prayer is the way to hear from God. Jesus calls himself the good shepherd. And then later on in, in John chapter 10, Jesus says this about himself as the good shepherd. He says, my sheep listen to my voice. This implies that we should be able to hear from our shepherd. And so maybe a good question is this, is in prayer, how do we hear the voice of God? And I want to give you two ways, two things to practice as you go, because I believe in a God who still speaks today. So how do we hear from God? The first way is this, we pause. I want to encourage you to take more moments in your life to, to pause to pause and, and set time aside with the Lord. Actually put it in your calendar. I'm going to spend time with the Lord. Find a quiet place or a quiet path to walk along. Open the word of God or listen to the word of God. And then pause that and reflect on it and ask the Lord, Lord, what are you saying in your word? And then what are you saying to me? And then actually take time to listen, to allow the Lord to speak to you. And then write it down. Because sometimes you'll write something down, you'll come back to it and go, oh my goodness, the Lord was speaking to me. He was giving me this encouragement for this time. The second way to hear from God is to get moving. So the first was to pause. The second was to get moving. You know, for me, I often hear from God best while I'm in motion, while my faith is in motion. You know, actually God has told us what we're called to do. And when we actually step out and do those things, 
the Lord speaks to us. He's called us to love others. He's called us to forgive those who hurt us. He's caused, called us to go out and share our faith. He, he's called us to feed the hungry. He's called us to, to meet the needs of the poor. So get out and do those things. And while in motion is often when the Lord speaks. Prayer is powerful because we get to hear from God, but also prayer is powerful because prayer is the way to see God, way to see God. On the stage here, there are all these different lights, all these colorful lights, and they can do different things with them. But you'll notice they release haze into the room. You can even see it coming now. And that haze is released into the room because when the haze is in the room, you can see the vibrancy of the color of the lights. You can see the beams of the light. The light was always in the room, but it wasn't until the haze entered that you could see the beams of light. This is what prayer is. God is in the room no matter what. But when we pray, it's like releasing haze into the room. When we pray, it, it, it opens up the opportunity for us to see and hear what God is doing and saying and how he's, he's guiding. And so as you go to pray, just think about, I'm releasing haze into the room. The Lord's going to show me and he's going to show up in this moment. Let me close by answering this third and final question. Who is prayer for? In this section, in, in James 5, the last two verses, 17 and 18, James brings up this great prophet, Elijah. And why does he bring up Elijah? For a couple of reasons. Elijah was a mighty man of prayer. We heard it in this passage that Elijah prayed for rain to stop and it stopped. He prayed for rain to start and it started. I mean, that's a powerful man of, of prayer, isn't it? I don't, I've never done that before. So he was a powerful man of prayer. But also in the story of Elijah and the listeners of this book would have known this. Elijah ran away in fear at one point, afraid of another person. Elijah fell into deep depression. And so what James is saying here is, listen, Elijah was an ordinary person just like you and me. But he prayed powerful prayers. And so who is prayer for? It's for everyone. It's for each and every one of us. And as the band comes back on the stage, I want you to pull this card back out. And on this card, I'm hoping that you took some time. And if you, if you haven't yet, I'd love for you to take some time and just write on here. What, what, is, what is the request you'd want to make? What would you be asking of the Lord today? What would you like somebody else to be praying for you? And in just a moment, we're going to stand and we're going to pass these all around the room. It's going to get a little bit chaotic. And then you're going to land with a card. And that card is going to be what you're going to pray for for the next seven days. And I want to encourage you to pray for this. And so write, write what you need to write down. Maybe for some of you, you want to pray for your children. Maybe for some of you, your, your children have, have left. They haven't returned to the Lord. Or maybe, maybe there's even a brokenness in relationship with you. You want to pray for your children. Maybe for some of you, you're going through a health journey and you, you just need prayer. Maybe some of you don't know where your provision is going to come from. You, you need to pray for more trust, but also you need to pray that the Lord would just bring something into your path. Maybe for some of you, you've got a situation that just requires a lot of wisdom and you need wisdom from the Lord. You need help. Maybe there's a broken relationship. Maybe, you're, maybe your marriage is on the rocks right now. You need the Lord to bless it. What is it? that you would ask of the Lord today. And then I want to take these cards and I want you to treat them like your, your personal prayer mission for this week. And so I want to invite you to stand with me. In just a moment, we're going to pass those cards out. And here's what I want to challenge you to this week. I want to challenge you to pray every day to set time aside, think about it. Don't, don't say, oh yeah, I'm gonna do this. Go to, take it to the next step of application. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna pray every day and here's when I'm gonna do it. I'd like for you to take that card with you and, and pray for it. This, somebody wrote this down because they, they want God to hear this prayer. And now you're gonna be entrusted with it. I'd love for you to take this real seriously. I, I don't wanna find any of these cards like on the floor. 
afterwards. And if, if somebody forgot one, I'd, I'd love to see you like come back in order to get it. Like treat it precious. Somebody wants me to pray for this. And I want to ask you to pray for it every day. The second thing I want to challenge you with is this. Is there something powerful about when people pray for you? And today at the end of our service, we're going to sing another song. But after that, I'll dismiss us. But we're going to have our prayer team up here. And I know we say this every week. But I really want to encourage you today to take advantage of it. There's power when we, when we ask somebody to pray for us. Just to lay a hand on our shoulder and just to, to speak over us. And so our prayer team's going to be up here. I'm going to be up here. We just want to, we just want to pray for people today. And so if that's prompting on your heart, I, I want to challenge you to take that bold step to come forward and just ask one of my friends to pray for you. And so now just a little bit of a chaotic moment. Here's what I want you to do. Is I want you to take the car that's in your hand and I want you to begin to just pass them around. Just pass them around to the right, then to the left, then frontwards, then backwards. This is like musical chairs and I'm going to tell you to stop in a moment. Just keep passing them around. Keep passing them around all over the place. Keep passing them until you have no idea where yours went. Pass them around. Pass the peace of God while you're doing it. All right, musical chairs, stop. All right. The card that's in your hand is your card. Listen, I realize that in the complexity of this, maybe you wrote a card and now you no longer have a card. Here's your assignment. You need to pray for everybody, okay? <laughs> Here's, you all have a card. Raise up your card if you have a card. This is precious, okay? This is precious. I want you to keep it somewhere where, where you know it is. If, if you're worried about that, take a photo of it. Keep it in your phone. And I want you to pray for this. This is somebody's request. I want you to go before the Lord on their behalf. And in just a moment after we sing, I'm going to invite people, for any of you who want to come and receive prayer this morning, don't be bashful. The Lions game isn't for a little bit longer, okay? You've got time. We'll make it quick. Um, but take advantage of this opportunity to be prayed for. And so uh, let's continue on in our worship together. As we're in this time of, of prayer and, and worship, um, we're going to do a song called Nothing Else. And I think this is a really important concept for us to really grab hold of, um, that even in our requests to the Lord, which are beautiful and necessary and needed and He wants to hear them, it can be so easy to forget that what we really need to be asking for is not just what God can do for us, but we need to be asking for more of Him, more of His presence. And so as you're praying for these cards and praying for yourselves and engaging with the Lord in this time, don't just ask for the request, but ask for that Jesus would show up in a way that is undeniably him. If somebody is asking for provision of some sort, ask that Jesus, who is the provider, would show up in a way that only he can. And when we sing together, I just want you and nothing else. We can treat these requests with the same reverence and respect and that same preciousness like we do with the Lord when we sing to him. Because that's what he wants from us. So let's go before him now. And we're gonna exalt and lift up his name in prayer and praise. And we're gonna lift up these requests to the only one who's capable of coming through. Let's sing.
Amen. Amen. I'm going to invite our, our prayer team down. And um, just one quick thing before we go. We have a prayer night that's coming up on October 23rd. And i uh, love to invite you to that. It's going to be held right here at our Clinton Township campus. And um, it's at 6.30 Wednesday, October 23rd. It's going to be an opportunity for us to come together as a church and pray for our church, pray for one another, pray for our country in this season. And so please um, make some time to be a part of that. Well, friends, let me pray for us and then we'll, we'll head out. And I'd love for you just to take advantage of coming up and being prayed for today. Lord, we're so thankful uh, that we can turn to you and talk with you and hear from you. And so, Lord, I pray for myself and all my friends here, Lord, uh, that we would turn to you. And as we do, uh, Lord, that you would meet us there. And I pray all this in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hey, have a great rest of your day. Please uh, come on forward.